Are you reaching your divine destiny? Prayer, faith, holiness are key to reaching your destiny. Join Prophet Nana Seopokusa Kodye get you closer to your God in prayer. Behind every greatness in the kingdom is connected to grace. Apostle Paul said, I am not doing this because I study with Gamera, the best university. He said, I am what I am by the grace of God. So if you don't recognize the grace, it will turn you to grass. Oh, somebody give the Lord a shout. Don't look at me, so we have already preached. What you hear from man is information. What you hear from God is revelation. Revelation is the mother and the foundation for faith. So without revelation, the struggle continues. Now this morning I'm preaching on revelation provoking faith. Hallelujah. Revelation provoking faith. Are you alive? Revelation provoking faith. I discovered that faith cannot be over preached. What did I say? Because the more you have the more the exploits you make. The more faith you have, the closer you are to God. Faith naturally attracts God's attention. You don't need to walk with him. When God sees faith, he comes himself. Did you hear what I said? Once God locates faith, it means that God can walk into a stadium. Once he enters, he's looking for faith. And once God sees faith, he can bypass one million people and get to the one who has faith. So, it's the vital link between God and man. Faith is one. The vital link. The way magnets automatically get attracted to peace or peace get attracted to magnet, faith naturally get attracted to God. So, if you are sitting here, you have faith. God is standing by your side. You didn't hear what I said. I said, if you are faith, God is standing by what? Your side. Faith naturally attracts God's attention. He said, without faith, it makes it impossible. So, you can do all the acrobatic display, but it is still impossible. It means that you can cry, you can weep, you can clap, you can jump, you can somersault. I was preaching yesterday in the church and I told them, you can be anointed with gas oil, engine oil, ajong uzomi. You see, a lot of people, you see, one of the things that is in our generation now is a lot of things coming up in the system that make people like Kujare Dukromunso, Jarinsu Efri, Gotemua, Yaswane Sokakra, Yediabeye Mkwaya, Fejare. Now, there is nothing wrong with doing those things. I don't know because <laughs> no scripture is of a private interpretation. Maybe that is what God told you to do or that is the direction God gave you. But those of you who go there to do that, you must make sure you have faith. Because not everybody who touched the garment of Jesus received virtue from him. I'm already preaching now. As I'm already preaching now, not everybody, a lot of people were touching. In fact, Peter reported that the people are thronging on you. Not everybody who touched Jesus got virtue, except the one who touched by faith. Don't stop me, I'm preaching. Hallelujah. Except the one who has faith. Except the one who has faith. Except the one who has faith. God naturally gets excited about faith. He said, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof. Stand here and speak the word only. And Jesus starts clapping his hand. He said, I've not seen such a great faith in Israel. So faith naturally gets attracted to God. But this morning, I am talking about the fact that probably everybody here has faith. Because the Bible says God has dealt with every man a measure of faith. So there is even a saving faith. When we were not in Christ, we didn't have any faith. For us to receive Christ, God must give us the faith for us to come to Christ. That faith is called saving faith. 
So there are different levels of faith. It doesn't end there. Some of you have developed your faith a little bit. Your faith has given you a husband. Your faith has given you a wife. By faith, you are driving a nice car. Probably where you are living, you know that you couldn't have bought it by, by, by hard work. You got it by faith. Am I talking to somebody here today? You don't even know why you are driving your business. Sometimes you don't have the capital, but you get things done. You are driving it by faith. So everybody is in a level of faith. But this morning, I am taking you to another dimension of faith. What do you mean by that? I just spoke about saving faith. Jesus asked the people, where is your faith? Some people told them, he said, you of little faith. Some people, he said that, I have not seen such a great faith. So it's not in the same level. All the faith is not in the same level. Somebody may be here. Those he asked, where is your faith? Probably they have it, but they are not using it. Oh, let, let me get to the choir. Maybe the choir will, will. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So you can have faith and you are not using it. Because he asked them, where is your faith? It means at that particular moment, when the disciples said that, don't you care that we perish? He knew that they're supposed to do something they were not doing. Why are you crying to me? Why are you calling me? Where is your faith? The thing that you are crying that you say you perish, there is something to silence here that is faith. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. There is something to shut it, and that is your faith. So, say, where is your faith? But I'm talking about another one, which I call revelation provoking faith. You are acting on that faith because you heard God. <laughs> Now, when you are operating that faith, people cannot understand you. In fact, I cannot go deeper. When you start operating pro- revelation provoking faith, people will think you have lost your mind. Because most times, revelation provoking faith doesn't make sense. Everybody say, go to hospital, you say, I'm fine. And they see that you are shivering. They say, the guy is mad. Abraham, leave your father and your mother and go to a land that will show you. And God didn't tell him where he's going. The only reason Abraham is going is that he heard God say go. So that faith has been... Pro- now, remember, before you can understand revelation provoking faith, I told you some time ago that what you hear from man is information. What you hear from God is revelation. So anytime God speaks and you hear, you have picked revelation. <laughs> Talk to me. What you hear from man is what? What you hear from God is what? Somebody says, spoke inside. What do men say the son of man I am? Twelve disciples plus the master, thirteen. And the room was quiet. When they wake up, Matthew said, when I was going to Mokola, I heard they say you are Elijah. Mark said, <laughs> uh, 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 Thomas said, I'm just coming from Bebe. He said, they say you are Jeremiah. If I want to go to Parliament House, they are debating that you are one of the prophets. He said, everything you have said is based on, informa- is based on information, what men are saying. What do you say that I am? All the things you have said is about people's opinion. It's based on what others are saying down. But you that are close to me, what do you say I am? That is the time Jesus Christ was trying to bring them to the place of a personal revelation about their master. If you don't have a revelation about your pastor, you will get offended. All the offense people are not clapping already. Anybody not clapping, you can sense that they are already offended. Are you getting what I'm talking about? You need a person. So Jesus said, I'm not care. I don't care about what people are saying in town. No, somebody can meet you and say, that's for Prophet Anam. I don't even think he's a man of God. That's for Prophet Anam. Are you sure God has really called him? That's for Prophet Anam. Where did he say he's coming from? You that has sat with me for a long time. What do you say that God? So, this is a similar situation Jesus found himself. If I don't establish this thing here, many of them will get offended. Because one day Jesus preached a message in John chapter 6 and all the congregation <laughs> left him. They go home and read the whole of John chapter 6. 
That is the first time he preached cannibalism. Except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no life. The people say, ah, you, you don't even bath for it. They go so angry. The Bible says the disciples say, this is hard teaching. And they left. And he asked the apostles, will you also go? I'm ready to sack you. If you don't have a personal revelation about the anointing God has connected you to for your breakthrough in future, you can easily be offended. If you don't have a revelation about the place you are where you are not supposed to be there, you will stay there till your destruction comes. Some people are in some churches, they are not supposed to be there. Where God is taking them, that ministry can never help them. It will help others, but not them. Wow, 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 wow. Oh, you don't want me to preach it the way it is. That is a problem you have with me. What are you talking about? It cannot help them where they are going. But tradition can bind you to that place. You make the word of God of none effect by the traditions of your fathers. So when tradition penetrates in the church, it renders the word impotent. You are not supposed to be there. Jonathan has no business with his father Saul. Even though he was his biological father. His ministry is with David. But tradition bind him to Saul and he died with him. Mm. On the day of the covenant, oh, Saul's suicide and Jonathan's judgment. His judgment was wrong. The day of the covenant, they exchanged their staff, they exchanged their sword, which is the mantle of authority. And he said, David, I know you are going to be king, and I'll be your assistant. Why did you end up dying with your father? The thing Jonathan must enjoy, God kept it for Mephibosheth. So, he's supposed to wipe everybody in Saul's family off according to his judgment. But because Jonathan has a covenant, he couldn't have killed all Jonathan's descendants. Because Jonathan, by my way, you're supposed to be connected to this David guy. Hmm. The thing was a covenant. That is why, even though your father doesn't like him, but have joined your heart together, love is a spirit. The way we got attracted to one another is a spirit. You cannot explain why you love your wife. You cannot explain why you love your husband. That is why anytime you start misbehaving in your marriage, go back to the foundation of your wedding. Oh, the suspects are not clapping. Oh, yes. Take it. Sometimes take your wedding old pictures and start looking at it. And revive your love. To this morning, I was in the bathroom. And that kept me quiet. The Lord told me, say, son, the enemy has a land attack over the marriages of the church. And he started telling me a message I must develop and preach. He said, when you preach, you have no idea where it goes. And nobody in the world must hear what you preach. But the people are ordained for them to hear, they are going to hear it. I am not the pastor of the world. I am your pastor. So nobody needs to hear me. Some other people I pass out from afar. But if it is you, the Lord told me, say, the enemy has launched an attack over the marriages of the church. Mm -hmm. And then he continued to say something. Anytime you are living with your spouse and there is something you expect him to change and it's not changing, or you expect her to change and it's not changing, instead of coming under the devil's pressure to walk out, ask for grace. 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 My husband is not coming to church. I need grace of God to endure that season. Mm -hmm. Pearl is not giving you sex the way he has to give it to you. 
you need grace to sustain that time. But did you hear what I said? But think about it. Are you getting what I'm preaching now? Maybe Paul, when you touch him, he said, my bread, my menda. You will need grace. If you don't ask for grace to stay there, the enemy will push you to make a decision that will take you from grace. of you are here oh give the lord a shout that release something that just release something out of you and be free because you come under the attack of the enemy you you will come back and say now are you hearing what i'm talking about Look at somebody and say, it's good to laugh. Tell the person. All those who are not laughing, tell them it's good to laugh. Laughter makes the soul glad. You have not laughed the whole year. It's an opportunity for you to laugh once. Laugh. Am I making sense? <laughs> I don't take for granted when I hear the voice of God. Because you are going where you don't know, but God knows. We are on a journey to the place we don't know, but God knows. You need grace. Lord, I don't like my husband's behavior, but give me grace. Between the time and the time this thing will pass, nothing comes to stay, everything comes to pass. That is why it is repeated in your Bible, it shall come to pass. The financial trouble you are going through, you are not staying there. It will come to pass. It is just a part of your testimony for where you are going. Am I talking to somebody here today? The trouble you are going through is not permanent. It shall come to pass. Attack of the enemy. And listen, let me tell you what God told me. Sometimes your spouse can do something unconsciously that... The way you are thinking about it, he is doing it unconsciously. Sometimes I complain about something. Mama, if you tell me, say, I was not even thinking about it. But the enemy is interpreting it different in my ears. So if you don't take care, this is the voice you hear. The way he's behaving. Does he really love you? Don't you think this your girl in the office is rather nice? He's setting you up. Somebody say grace. So instead of trying to think and listen, anytime you are making a decision, make sure whether it's in line with scripture. That is why the orthodox people and the wise men, when they officiating marriage, even though it's not biblical, they add it and say for better, for worse. They anticipate that in case you don't meet better and you meet worse, you still don't quit. Now listen, I can bet you from scripture, I don't know about your life, but from Genesis to Revelation, nobody married and and ever stay married thinking that he got everything smooth. Because marriage is one of the things God used to shape in our character. It is one of the places we learn patience. It's one of the places we learn endurance. It's one of the places we learn self-control. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody here. It, 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 it's a school without graduation. Slap somebody and say, don't allow the devil to set you up. I had a case of a woman. A sister came to me and he said, he said, I heard you preach. 
and I, I'm committing adultery. So I say, why? He said, because my husband is doing it. So I decided that let me reply and pay him her back. I said, fine. That is what the devil told you to do. But this is the danger. I asked her a question that she started crying. I said, what about the day you were committing adultery? Jesus came. I say, can you imagine the day you were committing adultery, the trumpet sound and the rapture took place? So you see, you miss heaven not because God stopped you, but out of your husband's attitude. Maybe at the time you were committing your adultery, your husband has repented. And rededicate his life to Christ. So your husband has been raptured. Whilst you are with a man in Hotel Agogo, lying naked. Now listen, you must refuse to misbehave because of somebody's attitude. Ask for grace. Lord, I don't... This is how sometimes I talk to God. Sometimes your prayer must be conversation. Walk and say, Lord, I don't understand this. I don't know why this thing, I can't explain it. I don't even know how this thing came and I don't know what I did. I don't know what happened. But give me grace. Sometimes tell God, I, I, I'm not saying it's, it's not easy for me. But in order for me not to bring disgrace to your kingdom, give me grace. talking to somebody here today. It can be your boss. It can be anything. It can be sons and daughters. Sometimes you can come to the place huh? and when your child is a teenager, he's coming out with a character you don't understand. And you feel like, Lord, you are gnashing your teeth. Oh, Lord, what did I do wrong? What did I do? Instead of complaining, say, Lord, I can't explain. I don't know. But give me grace. Because when grace comes, you go through something and come out and people ask you, how did you do it? Because everybody knows that it is not natural for anybody to go through what you went through. But you didn't fail it because grace has your backing. One day, Apostle Paul saw a thorn in his flesh. He prayed three times, the tongue was not going. The apostle that is raising the dead, the apostle that can be on the storm of the sea and survive, the apostle that can survive two weeks of darkness, is praying and the, 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 the messenger of the devil will not go. A tongue in his flesh. When you went to ask God, God said, my grace is sufficient for you. And he said, there is a reason for putting the tongue there. Even though the devil might have brought it, but I have allowed it. He said, well, how can you do that? He said, I have given you so much abundant revelation that if I don't put bricks on you, you will be exalted above your measure. And whilst you are pointing others to heaven, you yourself might mix it. So sometimes, wait, wait, wait a second. Sometimes, that thing that you want God to take it quick, it is probably to control you. Because no matter how powerful you are, there should be something inside you that tells you that you are still a man. And you are a woman. No matter how powerful you are, there should be something that tells you that I am still a wife. And I must submit to my husband. Even though I am richer than him, I must be able to submit to him. And for that thing to take place, God must put something in you that make you come back to him. And say, with all my money, I'm struggling with this thing. So Apostle Paul said that, I've written two tests of the New Testament, but I can't deal with this. A, a tongue. And God said that, ha, I brought this in you so that you will not be exalted above measure. Because you have been taken to heaven three, you will later on feel like you are not a man. So I've put this tongue in your flesh so that you feel like you are, not a, you are a man. Sometimes, you come to preach under tremendous anointing. And when you leave your car, go home. God leave the anointing and make you feel how ordinary you are. Mm. Yes. 
So that you will not be exalted above your measure. So maybe the way your wife attitude is, is a reason to put brakes on you. If you try to get a woman you claim you want, it might be the way that seemed right to you. But the end. This is what we must learn. Christianity is not about I want miracles and breakthroughs. No. It's not give me, give me, give me. We are on a journey. We are going towards heaven. And whatever we do, we must have heaven in mind. We can't play games with it. You cannot lose heavy because of marriage. You cannot lose heavy because of your job. You cannot lose heavy because of a boyfriend. You cannot lose heaven. The reason you need grace to go through is that it's temporary. Go through it. It's not a permanent situation. Nothing comes to say. You can only do that by walking in a revelation provoking faith. You have heard the voice of God. You don't know where you are going, but because God said go, you are going. We have never seen a wall come down by people shouting. But because we heard God, we are going around the wall. Revelation provoking faith (laughs) is connected to the voice of God. What do you say that I, the son of man, I am? Mm. And Peter said, you are the Christ. Jesus said, shh. He said, Simon Peter, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. If it is not flesh and blood, then it's supernatural. (laughs) Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, Baba, my father, which is in heaven. And so, he said, on this rock, I will build my church. So, for Peter to hear the voice of God and download what he hears from God is a revelation. Anytime God speaks and you hear, faith is already there. Nobody can hear God and doubt him. When the word is revealed, it cannot be doubted. You cannot doubt what you can see. You cannot doubt it. If you really saw it, it's not possible for you to doubt it. The people that heard the voice of God, they couldn't doubt God. Wow! Wow! Those who hear God, it sounds stupid, but you can't stop them because they heard God. They can even be prostitutes. This is Rahab's testimony. I know your God has given you the land. That is why I've kept you in my house. How did he know? I know your God has given you the land. He said, your fear has fallen on us. But me, I want to join you. You can't hear God and mix it. So instead of praying for faith, check your hearing level. Let the eyes of my understanding be what? Enlightened. It's not that your faith is not there. You are not picking the voice of God. When you don't hear God, Christianity can be a struggle. When you don't hear God, you will live as if faith does not work. Revelation provoking faith. Faith makes faith naturally works. So, there are some people God speaks to them in the Bible. It doesn't make sense. But because they heard God, enemies are chasing you. Red Sea is in front of you. Mountain on the left and the right. God says, go forward. If you don't hear God, you will think God is mad. They heard God. Oh, in a time of season by this time, I shall return. And I will visit your wife. And the many post times, two women shall conceive. And he shall have a son. The boy is not born yet, but his name in ceremony has been done. And his name shall be called Isaac. So, according to the book of Romans chapter 4, verse number 17. As it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickened the dead, and called it those things we be not as though they were. Verse 18. Can you go with me? Uh, uh, can you go with me, please? Who against whom believe in hope? 
that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was what spoken so when somebody spoke he heard it so the reason why you cannot take Abraham's faith away from believing that Isaac shall be born is that he heard it according to that which was what spoken so God spoke the word and Abraham heard it so so shall thy seed be Go to verse number 90. Am I preaching this morning? Uh-huh. And be not weak in faith. And be not weak in faith. He has every right to be weak, but he couldn't be weak because he had God. So when you hear God, weak faith doesn't have a place. The reason your faith is weak is that you have not heard the voice of God concerning the situation. No. Yesterday I was preaching something at the all night. On Friday I said, Simon heard from the Holy Ghost that he will not see death until he has seen the consolation of the world. Because of that, death ran away from him. And after he took baby Jesus, he said, now I can depart in peace. So death, now you can come back. But until the word of God come to pass, you have no business in my life. Hmm. I said, may you hear the voice of God? Watch this. And being no weak in faith, consider not his own body now and dead. When it was about a hundred years old, Neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Jesus Christ. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully, and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able also to what? Perform. Okay. This lady here, 14 years ago, was following me. Because I promised her that I would marry her. So because of the promise, when I go to his house, he opens it for me to come. I have not given her ring. He has anticipations. I have not given her anything. He doesn't even know where I live. And he enter my single room, but he believes what I said. Why are you doubting God? Now watch this. Don't clap. You see the difference between Anything mama have you do to doubt God? Anything lady have you do to doubt God? And anything you believe from me is that he heard me. So the way he heard me, without ring, without engagement, and he followed me with the hope that this guy will marry me. If you hear God, it may not look like you have it now. But you have hope. Yeah. Revelation provoking faith. It doesn't make you become depressed in the center of trouble. It doesn't make you become depressed in the center of Wahala. It doesn't make you depressed. Kama Sudabaya. Everybody put your two hands in your ears and say, Lord, open my ears. Say, Lord, open my spiritual ears. From today, let me hear your voice. Some of you, eh, when I say, close your ears, so you didn't even hear what I said. Revelation provoking faith. Now, let me end this message. Let let, let me take you to four points and then I'll end this message. In order for the revelation provoking faith to work, these four points must operate in your life. Number one, you must not be ignorant about God's word. Hmm. What did I say? Ignorance of God's word can be a hindrance to revelation provoking faith. Everybody say ignorance. Give me Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Ignorance of God's word. Mm. This is a generation the devil is making sure that we are ignorant of the word. He's making sure that we don't know the word. My people, my people, my people. They are in praying family chapel. God calls them my people. They are in whatever church. God calls them my people. Whatever they are, God calls them my people. God calls them my people. He said my people are what? Destroyed. For lack of what? Knowledge. So, now watch this. There are different ways God speaks to us. Different way. The other ones I'm going to mention, some of them you are not in control. 
For instance, you come to church and you want a prophetic word. You are not in control of it. You are not listening to me. What did I say? You are not in control. Every prophet you go and you say, Bra, and come, Gumiya, maybe say, it's not of God. Because the prophecy comes as the spirit wills. <laughs> hey, somebody say, hey. So you know what? You are not in control. What about hearing God's voice from above? You are not in control. You can't force God to speak. You cannot force God the Lord by force. Speak to me. No, it cannot be, it cannot be possible. You can't force God to do what? To speak. You cannot force God to speak. Tell somebody you can't force God to speak. Are you hearing what I'm talking about? You cannot force God to speak to you. So you are not in control about a prophecy. You are not in control about hearing God's voice. You are not in control about by force dreaming. Lord, I'm going to sleep. Whether you like it or not, make sure I dream. You are not in control. So, so watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You are not in control of prophecy. It means there's not something you can depend on 100%. Whether there be prophecy, they will cease. You are not in control of God speaking to you direct from heaven. A lot of people even see Jesus. He didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. After Jesus ascended to heaven, he has revealed himself to many people in the generations. Some of them, when he see them, he just smile and leave. Theo Osborne said, when Jesus revealed himself to me, he smiled and left. So the smile of Jesus is even more than enough. So it means that even when God comes to you face to face, you are not in control of what he has to say. You are not in control of coming to church and by force let God speak to you. Because sometimes you are not in control of the message you are going to hear. Sometimes, even the way I prepare the message and I meditate, it doesn't really go the way I thought it must go. Because God's ways are not my ways. And because God knows what you need, he knows how to present his message to you. But you are not in control. Maybe you came to church and you wanted a message on holiness. But God is talking faith. It means you are not in control. You are not in control of the preaching. You are not in control of hearing an angel. You are not in control of hearing God. You are not in control of having prophecy. But one of the voice of God you are in control is your Bible. Bible. Hmm. I'm preaching. I said I'm preaching. So, if I can hear God, the reason God doesn't talk by heart and talk rough rough is that Everything you expect him to say, he has documented it in a book. <laughs> I am talking about revelation provoking faith. How many of you are listening to? That is why you can read showbiz from chain to chain, from page to page. But when you take your Bible, then you are sleeping. Because anytime you take your Bible and you open it, Satan starts feeling threatened. Why? Because you might hear the voice of God. One of the fastest and the commonest way God speaks is through his word. He spoke through the prophets in the past, but now he's speaking through his son, which is the same also as the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was what God. So my people cannot be able to preach by revelation provoking faith because they lack knowledge about my word. For instance, everybody watch me, watch this. For instance, the gameplay of the kingdom and the rules for whichever you are demanding from God are different. What do you mean by that? The rules for basketball is different from the rule for hockey. The rule for handball is different from the rule for what? Whatever rule. Football. There can be football, they call it in Ghana. There's another football in Australia that, uh, that they catch and run. Up to date, I don't understand it. Because they run and they fall down and they say go. What is that? I don't understand, but it's a turn of a football. When you come to the kingdom, the rules for getting divine healing is different from the rules of prosperity. Now, the reason one day somebody said something in America that I, 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 thought, I thought was why he says, Prof, the reason you don't enjoy this game is because you don't understand and you don't know the rules. 
Because some of them to watch soccer and they don't understand because they don't know the rules. So if you don't understand God's word, you won't enjoy it. You will live as if you are not a Christian. You will live as if God is not there. The rules are different. Everybody say the rules are different. So you must not lack knowledge. You must not lack what? Knowledge. You must not lack knowledge. If you have to operate in a revelation provoking faith, make sure you are not ignorant about God's word. Coming back to the attack on marriages, sometimes marriages are not working because one party is not growing. Because, boy, if you grow, you will start behaving like a man. Can I go deeper? A man is born, but the husband is made. So, not every man can be a good husband. And not every woman can be a good. Having breath does not mean you are qualified for marriage. Having breasts does not mean you are qualified. Having a big back doesn't qualify you for knowledge. Having hips and makeups, you can know how to make up. It doesn't mean you can be a wife. The responsibility is high. In fact, the way you are selfish, you are not qualified to marry. Oh, somebody needs grace. Some of you, eh, some of the things you are complaining in your matrimony, somebody is going through worse. But it doesn't show in their face. The difference is that they are growing. Growing in the Lord. When you grow, your attitude will change. The things you get angry about, now you will laugh. Oh, when you grow, when you grow, when you, the way I want to know, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, watch this. I have picked another thing in the spiritual laboratory. Apostle, can I mm-hmm. tell you why people attitude in church is like? A lot of people are thinking church is a place to make business. Mm. Mm. It's not a place to serve God. If you came here because of what you, 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 you can get, you can get offended. But if you came here because of what you can do for God, God will give you more than what you even ask him for. So you will notice that as, 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 as PFC is growing, I'm learning a lot of things. That when the TDJ said something, he said, the people that started protest us with me, all of them are offended. All of them are somewhere frustrated. But the people that came later are enjoying the blessing. Let it not happen to you. Let it not happen to you. Because, because the church is not controlled by man, but it's for Christ. He, he knows who to bring. And you see more people coming. You better align yourself with them. If you have a good attitude, they will still respect you as a senior man in the army. But if you don't have a good attitude, they will overtake you and go ahead of you. Let it not happen to you. And I'm not in control of it. Listen, I am not in control of your character. I am not in control of your attitude. It's a choice. If your husband is misbehaving, you are not in control of it. But you can have grace. To let not it affect you. Wow. I'm preaching. Maybe only Peter is hearing it. Yes. I'm preaching. I'm preaching. Are you getting what I'm talking about? No. Look at somebody say church is not Mokola. It's not a business center. It's a place to come and serve God. It's a place for you to come and contribute. Not what you can get. If you're a pastor along the life, God permit us to pay, the church will pay you. That is why there are structures in the church. If everything is free, then I can gather the offering and put it in my car boot. But I only, I only have what has been set and ordained for me. And I don't cross that line. My salary was decided by financial board, not myself. So that there are structures on the thing. So this church can have investment. If I am a, just a chopper, the church can have investment. Because the church is not yours. If you have this thing in mind, it makes you sober. Listen, 
Everything has an expiring date. Everything. The most important thing is your connection with God. Your relationship with God. Don't sell it for anything. One day you might not have that business again. That husband will not, in fact, one day that husband disturbing you and that wife will not be there. Don't look at the attitude to fool around. Even if your husband is committing adultery, it's not a license for you to do it. Stay with God. Stay with God. Don't fool around. This word will pass. I was preaching in Trinity Baptist. I called a lady and I asked her, when is she going to marry? They said his fiancé is at Kumasi. When he left it, the Lord told me he has lied to you. But don't say anything. When you come to me and I ask you a question, based on the answer you give me, the Holy Ghost is a witness. Uh, John G. Lake, one of, the, one of the evangelists was preaching in his time. A man came to give a testimony that he has cancer. He didn't have, he said he was testing whether the guy is a true prophet. It's not a place to tell because the prophet can only say what God revealed to him. So he came to tell, I had cancer, but it's gone. When he was going, the man stopped and said, the Holy Ghost told me to tell you that you didn't have cancer, but now that you have come to testify falsely, you have it. And he died in four weeks. It's in God's general, say. I think it's there. I even have it told you. He said it. He was coming to mock around the Holy Ghost. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people don't see the spirit, they see man. Yeah. No, no man after the flesh. If you are looking at this slim guy here, you are making a mistake. There is another backing behind him that should make you fear. There's something. There's something. No, no, no. Without the Holy Ghost, I can't do the things I do. No. Today, when I wake up, I was tired. The Lord told me, get up and go and preach. You have never preached and get tired. He said, the way you say you are tired, get to the pulpit and see whether you are tired. Because there's something I put on you. So, so if you think you are looking at a man, Apostle Paul, from, Apostle Paul said, henceforth, no, no man after the flesh. That is why Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am? If you don't have a revelation about me, you'll get offended. You'll get angry. Even you must have a revelation about your husband. You must have a revelation about your wife. Lord, this man of Mary, show me who he is. Yes, and yeah, I'm not talking about revelation. Show me. Over so Diana, eh, oh, 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 He's a difficult woman. He's a difficult man. I have never grew up anybody like this, but grace. I feel one say, because of the grace given to you, everybody couldn't stay with him. People come back and say, hey, we see that you are happy. How are you able to live with this guy? Have you ever been to the office that people come and ask you, how are you able to work with this man for four years? Because nobody has tried for three months. Grace. That is why we have to pray. We are starting the fasting tomorrow. Come and invest yourself in prayer. The attack is coming from every side. The enemy is launching it from the front, from the side, from the side, and from the back, and from the top, and from the underground where you live. The attack is coming everywhere. If it's not your finances, it's your marriage. If it's not your marriage, it's your job. If it's not your job, it's a contract that is not signed. If it's not a contract, it's promotion that is not coming. When you do your best, they don't appreciate it. The attack is coming from everywhere. You need grace. And you can only be graceful when you are prayerful. The more prayerful you are, the more grace you enjoy. Grace. One day I was praying about prayer. I said, Lord, I'm praying for the president. I'm praying for the governor of Bank of Ghana. I'm praying for chief justice. Lord, give us good people. He said, shut up, shut up. Don't pray those prayers. He said, even when I give you good people, the people's attitude doesn't change. The people have, can do nothing. You can be in office that when you are changing something wrong, they will attack you. So we have a certain stronghold of attitude. It will take the power of God to break it. No. When you do right, rather they see you as a wrong person. 
So the economy is bad. You are doing that. This is the right way. But the people say no. Don't be prayerless. Join the fasting train. When you are prayerful, you will have God's backing. Prayer is the only thing God demands to intervene on this earth. Stop your petty excuses. Remember your creator in the days of your youth. Revelation prophetic faith demands people that are prayerful. Elijah was a man subject to life passion as we are. It means he has constitution. He has weakness. He has sought for, but he prayed more earnestly. So your weakness is not an excuse for you not to pray. Elijah was a man subject to life passion. If you can go to work, come to church. Mm -hmm. You have no excuse. If you don't come, it won't affect God. But don't run to God when you are in trouble alone. Let trouble come and meet you with God. By the time trouble came, God was on your side. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till trouble come. Then you run to God. It is the nature of the Christianity in our generation. That is the thing I saw that make me not put myself under pressure to just help people anyhow. One day I was trying to pray for a man. The Lord told me, he said, even if he get the breakthrough, he's going back to the devil. I didn't, God didn't make ways. He said, why do you want me to set somebody free who are going back to give glory to the devil? He is just, that's why sometimes when you want to come out of something, God doesn't bring you quick. It is one of my points. If you have to operate in a revelation provoking faith, you need patience. What is the first one? What is the first one? Ignorance. Let me stay there a little bit before I give you the second one. Let me stay there. Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. How do you damage ignorance? Second Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. How do you damage ignorance? Everybody read it with me. Read it and say it very loud and read it like university students. It is still very weak. Put some power in it. Repetition is a matter of learning. Oh, you have made me remember my mother's class one class. Study to show yourself approved. A pastor must not do it for you. You yourself. Hmm. If you don't study, every, every wind of doctrine can carry you. What is a prophet? You don't even check the spirit behind. The danger in our generation is that we don't care the spirit. We just want the results. So you see, if you are trusting God that God should open your womb and give you a child, there is a patient period you have to wait. If you want to move forward, you can go to Agbalak, but he will give you one. But it will come with trouble. So I'm not talking about the fact that you won't get the solution, but it will come with a certain trouble. Steady to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that need not need to be ashamed. Rightly what? Dividing in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse number 10, there was a church after they finished preaching and they have made notes like this. They go back to search. <laughs> and the, the brethren immediately sent Paul away. Paul and Silas by night unto Berea. It is a particular city and a church who coming to Tita went into the synagogue of the Jews. Everybody said Berea. So there's a particular church they went there. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica. So when the church is not noble, God knows. They can be sitting there. They have all nice dresses. They are there like a church, but they know nothing. They are ignorant from the pastor to the instrumentalist.
They have created human doctrine. They are using psychology. They lock 10 millimeters per minute. There is no liberty in the church. You have a form of godliness, but you have denied the power. 10 millimeter per second. Speed limits in church. People are very sanctimonious. They greet you. Oh, hallelujah. And what they are greeting you, they have ulterior motives. The Bible said, those who were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. I pray that PFC will be a church that received the word with all readiness of mind. Give me the, the New Living Translation. I want to read that one before I come back to King James, if you don't mind. And the people of Berea were more open-minded than those in Thessalonica. Open-minded. So you can preach to a people that are not open-minded. Dog, somebody say, what is that? When you are preaching, because they sit in groups to gossip about you. It is dangerous to pastor a church that are fashions. You shouldn't be ignorant about God's word. All pastors who beg people to stay in their church, they mess the church. You cannot keep anybody God is sending away. No. If I'm pastoring 20 people and they love me and they love Christ, it's better than having 10,000. The people of this church, the people of this church, the people of the church in Berea, the Bible said they have what? And the people of Berea were open-minded. It means that at church, you can freely talk to anybody. Oh, how are you doing, brother? It's good to see you. I've never seen you. What's your name, brother? And I like the way the Americans do it. Eh? Stand up, let me show you. Say, I went to America. Oh, how are you doing, brother? Wow. Hey, it's good to see you, man. Tell you, your body is very awful. <laughs> do you? you? You do? Hey. I rebuke it in Jesus' name. When I touch the guy's body, I felt the thing. Lord, give me somebody. Amen. They love it. They are open-minded. When you go to some of the American churches, you can't see power, but you see open-mindedness. Love. Genuine love. Hey, how are you doing, man? It's good to see you. Where do you say you come from? Ghana. Hey, wow. It's good to see you, buddy. Hey, hey, Charlie, come and see Nana. He's from Ghana. He's a good guy. This my friend. This my friend. That which will be good morning. Uh, uh, say. Look at somebody and say, Are they? Are they? Some people are in church. They are not talking to anybody. What are you looking for? The back I practice about to walk on the baby. We know beyond Casa. Why a check who said crow crow is what bono and I said, but party for my cooker. What on so you are you are just be free. Life is a gift. And listen, we don't want those people here. I don't want them. Honestly speaking, if you have that spirit, I don't want you around me. No, I am praying that God should take you away quickly because you will infect people with it. The danger with that spirit is that you will do it and go and fight people you are not supposed to fight. Yeah. Women's Sabbath starting now, they bow with so, what the Bible says, so now they are bow, pass up, uh, 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 pass up, so pass up, Marty. After now, they are bow, Mama, if you so. Who feel up here? Now they bow. Now, ha. The Bible told me. What I will say, I'm going to make a cry. I'm ready for that nonsense. Oh. Free spirit. Come to church, feel free. Hallelujah. You're not the only one I've dealt with. I've dealt with people. Obey your parents in the Lord. You have a responsibility to obey me. I respect what I say. Oh, show me. They are open minded, free spirits. It makes you enjoy church. We want the spirit that you pour in person. But what about you come to a church? Which I'm performing so. Department, I'm going to watch a six. Small department, watch a six. Free minded. Huh? Church department, it means that. So many roots were department, man. Let me chum. 
Now some mess come to me. So me bold route to fear. I don't me am bold racket ho. Me be na route to the fear no power nya she na me go still with am na here. Look at someone say can I come to your house and eat? Tell the person can. I? Ah. Oh yes, come. Can I come to your house? Ha, this is the common thing you see in the church in the New Testament, in the book of Acts of the Apostle. They were with one accord in one place. And they have all things in common. They were one another. No depression, no oppression, no suppression, no, no moodiness, no lemon juice baptism attitude. See, if you have been baptized in lemon juice, when they show mom or your church, you know, they always look young. Smiling. You see the way they are looking here. They walk around. They don't care. These people who go and say, Oh, we are so for they can preach. Baba no more said they are happy. But Sabbath, he can pray, he can bring the presence of God down. The, some of that's how I was, I mean, I to me, I have done rehearsal at home, ah, the thing is not working. So I'll stop. They are free. Just let God be free. Even the, I check something about the pastors who have titles that they are not free. Look at them. I said, chill on. Be free. Why are stiff? But sorry, I say, ah. Uh, yeah, praise and worship, not Jaha. As a Koliku. You are just there. Feel free. It's not your grace, it's God's grace. Yeah. You are free to dance. Don't you see the way I dance there? I don't care. Enough for Brother Rombom Shemis. Reverend Joshua Suti Menya, Mr. Mia, dead. Even stop that. Some, some, some young prophet, they don't have a quarter of what God has given us. Free life. It's a gift from God. Why are you chinching and you Why are you tapping, sister? We make us cry now. Whoa, 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 whoa. A friend is saying, sales at a day at the Tesso San Akotoy. At Tesso. Black Friday at Tesso. If I'm a real riot at Tesso. I won't say they're $200. So I buy a Tesso, we do 45. That's what I saw at Tadere at Tesso. At Tadere at Tesso. Feel free. What are they being told, baby? A cantamanto, and I don't know. Celestina, and your manu, and no, no, and your common. Tabana, I'm a tosser to a cantamanto, and you're being told, baby. I die. Them four. You can't stand to let it here Sunday. A basset be in your mire. We came to praise the Lord. This is the conclusion of the matter. You shouldn't bless us. Let the millionaire praise God. Let the thousandaire praise God. Let the contractor praise God. Let the businessman praise God. Let the businesswoman praise God. The chief executive and the president. The MP and the chief justice. Give the Lord a shout. Let everything that has breath. That's what it is. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I thought I was teaching. I thought I was teaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. This church, let's build a culture of love and joy. Culture. And you burn out this aspirin to grab you can't fit into it. And to him, yeah, yeah, you're free. I come American, yeah, yeah, say, honey, we can't take it there. You can't go to America and we by the roadside. 
brother, you will pay with good measure. Press down, shaking together. And by the time they take you to running over, you will know that you are in America. Now, some of these things, they punish you and publish it so that others will not repeat. So when we build a culture of joy, a culture of love, we are not entertaining and concern and gossip. Sitting and talking to two. Build it in the choir. Build it in the protocol. Build it in the ushering department. When those people come, cut them off. We don't want these things here. We come to serve the Lord. So it becomes a culture of this church. If I've done something with you and you are not happy, come to me. Let's talk about it. Talk about it. Sheila, I don't hear me now. And I'm I'm sorry. Eh? I'd say, I'm sorry. Don't worry. Two weeks I'm messing you. But for me. And from so many pounds. You're quite baby. To me, Chema. Ah, me to say, ah, I'm so rude to tell baby you. I come to 20 and out here. Eh, I'm telling my friend Ruth, right? Oh, yeah, headdress and headdress I can see. But only feeling. No, I'm not going to go. I'm So, I'm not going to go. I was sending out boom. I'm church member. I was sending out boom. Hey, Ruth. Oh, hey, no, no, no. And come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Hey, Ruth, come on. Ruth, come on, come on, come on. Ruth, how did you straight to kitchen? What can we do to at and grab a cup? Now we still be a whole. Just sit on the whole. I know oh, and I say my corona to another woody. I should be able to come to your house and feel free. You're my brother, you are my sister in the Lord. So me to me call Fatima Fio Nima. Now, so me to be my fear. Let me see my mission. I say anything. How many of you believe what I'm preaching? This is the revelation God is giving to us for where we are going. Let us live in harmony. All this material, Macau, it doesn't build, it destroys. Material, Wakame. Woman treat me here. Woman, you may say, listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. <laughs> and listen it very carefully. Church and be in leadership, handling a group, marriage is one of the ways God trains your character. You must be able to live with people, lead them. They disagree with you. They are not in agreement. You must be able to disagree and walk in love. And build your differences. This thing shouldn't separate us. Period. Quiet. I didn't hear you talk. Wait there, quiet master. I did. I was here for more high. I was here for cold. I'm paying for black. Now you can't. You can't. In this year, sorry, ya. No, no, get back. Come and cast. No, catch him. Say, man, come and don't do. Come and don't do. Now, what sorry? Now, what do I know? Now, you have pegged the girl down. And because you want support, you are winning other people. In Japan, quite practice. I say, in the manner. Now, you know. Hey, you. Hey, There are six things the Lord hate. The seventh one is abomination. Sowing discord among the brethren. Me. Man, I have served people's ministry before God allowed me to do this. And I've seen the way people can use discord to destroy church. I've seen it. I've seen it. Pa. I've seen it. I have seen it. I was talking about Sunday school. I just remember a, a wealthy man, my friend who came to me, he said that his children started behaving some way. One day he took them on some vacation and started questioning them. It's our Sunday school teacher said that we shouldn't listen to what you say. And we should rather listen to him because he loves them. Your father don't love you. Hey! Sunday school teacher. This is what makes me wake up. The pastor discovered that 
The guy has been in the church for eight years, but he has never entered auditorium. He only come from house to Sunday school. Come from house to Sunday school. Come from the house to Sunday school. Because what the mistake we make is that if you don't take it, you'll be the kind of pastor that don't give the Sunday school attention. And the teachers can be coming from their home as if the Sunday school is their church. And the spirit they are using to teach the children is different from the one you are sucking here. Because the thing should be in a certain rotation. It must go. So it goes and it comes. So what about I say? That's what we tell the message about the heart. Ukowa, it will be in your preaching to the children. You are drawing the thing from here and you are feeding it to the children. You are drawing the thing from here and you are feeding it. So one of the things we learn is that no Sunday school teacher must stay in the class for more than two weeks. This one go and teach. The next time Sunday he's in the church. Worshipping. Then the other one is teaching. Maybe two. Then they are rotating so that they are always building up. They are coming to all night. They are in teaching service because they are raising children. Because now, when your children are 10 years, literally they are 14. One day I'll preach about it. When they are 40 years, whether you like it or not, they are 18 to 20. Because they know the things 20 years know. They understand some things. So it's not something you can stop it. It is just in their system. That we will make a mistake if we don't guide it by God's word. Yes. Am I making sense? Yes. It must be guided so that when we build that culture, all the children that we are going to be born. And next year, I'm catch them saying, Oh, God told me. Sure, God told me. Confobe, whoa. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, enter my new boss. God will reverse it. Oh my, my child, whoa. Oh, go for the war. I'm telling you, next year, go for the war. God spoke to me. He has repeated it three times. He said, I will send fruitfulness birth into this church. Catch on, I said, whoa, 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 catch him. In fact, listen, listen. And God, sister, God is my eternal witness. Pastor Rubin Asari, Trinity Baptist, my father at the PJ Church. He said, Odifo, who do you think I can go for it? He said, One day I was preaching, I said that between now and two weeks, anybody that will fornicate will become pregnant. I don't know whether some of you were there. I don't even remember saying this. I said it strong. He said, 14 girls became pregnant. Rubin told me. Someone you knew me here. We took the word for granted. Say quiet for. So we said, God is even who munyina. Call boy for say. O munye nimiye. No say one day in testimony who o yia kola na kola nema. Wa wono. The green away. Pastor Ruben came to my house. Was telling me the story. I said that that's why. I said binum. When you speak, they are afraid. Yes, yeah. We are the budget man. We be In fact, a people come committed for the case. They will pregnant with triplets. Remember, me and you, Baba, I couldn't be sure I'm Baba. Triplets. Moses, I'm going to form one. Kunuma, you two, I'm ready. Wait three, wait three, wait three. I'm sorry. We have one dedication, nine children. Also, if you are, you are preaching. Still, we do a china. Empower that so. Best it, you know, and you're there. It's another message. One day I'll preach a message. When you are sleeping on the bed, that you don't own the best it. I saw something in the Bible. So when I saw one side of the be beer, now some person who are, we say we say best it we made there. Best it I'm a dad so I know made there. You mama have all the best is any other quarter. After that is another message. Say now me a boy for best it now. What about the pillow? 
Ya wudi uti to so na nyame ne o kasa. Enti edan bi a wo be ruam. There's a condition on that message. Se be shit ni nya wo dia. Na so no wo yire ne wo ho a. Yakopon say ya mo dia. Mu wi a period na mo da so no mu tu aka na mo nko. Na wo a be shit ni nya wo dia. Na ni pa wo di ni ru a ho no nya wo yire. It's a message. But not for today. Yet the Adam and the Yami Shira and the Kron Kron Ye and the Aye Ye ever sum Yami. I will Yami Aja, Yami Oba, and the Yami Wong Kron Kudi. What in America? Adam Yami Shira Kron Kron Ye. Any aye ye to me, yet the aye ye ni asa. Ye the best sum in your me. I will use Christ to deem. Tinamia ye are dumb. We're sila ye. Ye are bokron crabra bo. And the abba sorry, the amma ye nan soon a ye ye na mea ye. Now, don't so tired, sire. Ye the sum in your Remember, my so from one level to the other. Are you blessed this morning? You did in a bond, sir. I saw the dead. In that time, I'll be born. I saw the open terms and yeah, you've been out quite nice. We've been up, click, click, click. Won't you be an old choir? Oh, yeah, right. Never go, you know. Can come up, sorry. She'll be no being chill. Culture, shall be. Yes, sir, Benny, this year. No, what, 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 turn it to sister? No, down, Jen. Oh, hello. It's good to see you. But your friend, James. So, Mr. Friend, Mary. Oh, sir. To Mary. What, 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 who of fiancé now who are in the by feta? It's a friend who I was so kind to be the The Bema Wako Fano, no, so you're rolling the bar. Which will be as a friend who I was so kind of being. I roll in the bar, I'm going to be. Oh, but now before my beer, a friend of David, the beer, the baby is so. Come on, my wife for water menu. Did you order water menu? The beer, the beer. Let me add them. In your year, you know, a beer, you know, a beer. I say, Amen. Catch you, I said, I'm going to do. I said, "Usuma nye diye ba me pawa sem." But I won't say ba ko kra. Won't say ba ko pawa sem. Then show me, show me. Then I can say, "Juma wa unho na me pawa sem." Is there anybody here that the word of God is working on you, Abi? Now, can I have a word? Let me see whether my word is working. Is there anybody here that people in the office look at you and say you have changed? Oh, can I have a witness? Oh, yes, I can see a lot of them. Uh, people in your area, people around this. Ah, you have. Ch- How many of you also see yourself and you see that you are changing? Oh, give the Lord a clap of it. Come here, someone else. Someone else. Let me Let me end my message. Oh, I'm preaching with joy. Revelation provoking faith. Make sure you are not walking in fear. Look at someone say, no fears. If it is if it is fear, it's not faith. And if it is faith, it cannot be fear. What did I say? If it is fear, it's not faith. 
And if it is faith, it cannot be fear. I'll give you Job as an example. A lot of people have thought about the fact that it was the devil that attacked Job. But if you can remember the beginning of my message, I said that faith naturally attracts God. Did you remember? Do you know fear also naturally attracts the devil? Hallelujah. Fear naturally what? Attract the devil because it was getting to the end of the message that we understood. According to the book of Job chapter 3. That we saw why Satan had the permission to attack Job. Job chapter 3, I think verse number 25. Give me 24, 25. 24, 25. Give me 24, 25. Everybody couldn't see. They thought of Bonsan Abbey attacking Job. How did he attack Job? He saw something. For my signing came before I ate, and my runnings are poured out like waters. Verse 25. For the thing which I greatly fear is come upon me. So anytime you are afraid about something that has not happened to you, but you think it's going to happen, you have created the demon that is not there. You can create a demon. I fear. We knew about what created me. What I greatly fear, fear of the unknown, fear of height, fear of fear. Fear. Revelation provoking faith has no room for fear. Look at someone and say, you must refuse to be afraid. Claustrophobia. Fear of the enclosed place. People can be in a closed place and they are afraid. Some of you cannot sleep in a room alone. Deal with it. Can't sit in a play. Let you play, I'm play, no, enter a little tablet. Robert, I'm going to sit. I grip up, hey, I'm saying, Madam Pacho, please. Oh, me, I'm you, Mr. Jam. Famine, so said, you're a tally baby. Hey, Madam Pacho, Mr. Then you're not playing. Fear. It's not even a tablet. I'm saying, sometimes, who, now, I, I, small bumping, be, mommy, hey, hey, you're ready. Hey. Fear. Fear. Sometimes fear is a result of the way you behave. Attitude. Fear is rooted in insecurity. And when you are not secure, you have a funny attitude. Be secure in your marriage. The way you suspect your husband, it might not be that the way you think. It's fear. Fear is as a result of hearing the devil instead of hearing God. When you listen to the devil, you can walk in fear. I'm not too sure about the relationship I'm going through. Sometimes have you seen that I, I, I call girls and I ask them, do you have a fiancé? Then, it means that not that the guy is not there, you are afraid. Because fear doesn't bring assurance. When you are afraid, you don't have assurance. Revelation provoking faith has no place for fear. If you are afraid, you cannot act on what God told you to do. If you are sitting in the office and the Lord comes to me and says, leave your office and start a business, you need boldness to do that. Yeah. Listen, 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 stop clapping. One of the things I saw about God is that because he's not a photocopy machine, he's in the business of doing a new thing. Yeah. So most time he tells you to do something nobody has ever done. And you will need courage and strength and tenacity, you must get rid of fear. If you have to walk in revelation provoking faith, you must not be ignorant and you must not walk by what? Fear. What I greatly fear has what? Oh, talk to me. What I greatly fear has what? Number three. Revelation provoking faith will not work if you refuse to act on God's word. So refusing to act on the word of God will not permit you to walk in a revelation provoking faith. Everybody say acting on the word. Act. Act on the word. Somebody say, what do you mean by act on the word? Some young couples told me something. They said they have married for four years. They came to church and I gave him, some of you have seen me do some things and you don't ask me why I do the things the way I do it. And when they went home, I gave the prophecy they are going to, God is going to give them children. 
I, sometimes I can prophesy and even mention the name of the children. I say Esther and Joshua. The girl came to me after six months. I said, Daddy, if you don't say, I'm going to I am not going to go to the house. I am not going to go to the house. I am not going to go to the house. I am not going to go to the house. I am not going to go to the house. I am not going to go to the house. Are you getting what I am talking about? The moment you hear God act. Revelation provoking faith. What is whatever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it. Hey. Go around Jericho what, seven times. They go. Go and walk in the pool of Siloam. He went. Go and show yourself. You remember the message to the high priest. The Bible says, as they went, they were cleansed. Acting on the word. Acting on the word. Revelation provoking faith will not work if you refuse to act on God's way. Are you sick? Act on the way. When you pray in the name of Jesus, by his stripes I'm healed. Don't take a blanket and sleep. Step out of the bed. Because here people don't sleep. Act on the way. Thanksgiving, while the symptoms are there, is one of the powerful demonstrations of faith. Physically, the thing has not gone, but you are thanking God that you are here. Yeah. Acting on the way. Why do I do that? I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I feel. I am moved by what God is saying. I'm preaching good. Revelation, provoking faith. What is number one? Number two? Number three? Huh. Number three. <laughs> Refusing to act on the way can lead to misrevelation provoking. So act on the way. The third one is that if you are going to misrevelation provoking faith, for huh? don't concentrate on sense knowledge. What do you mean by sense knowledge? Your senses. Touching, feeling, hearing, smelling, seeing. Anytime you are walking by faith, the five senses are not important. Concentrate on the sixth sense, which is faith. Lord, they are quiet. I say they are quiet. Hallelujah. Huh. Amen. Concentrating on sense evidence or sense knowledge can lead to mixed revelation provoking faith. Hey, 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 I want to say something. It just dropped in my spirit. Look at someone and say, Worry is unbelief. Do you know why you are worried? You are concentrating on the senses. How is this thing going to happen? You are worried because you are not looking at the word. You are watching the saints' evidence. Hey, we look not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal. The things that are not seen are eternal. Can I add this one? We walk by faith and Concentration on sense evidence, sense knowledge, sense knowledge. I quoted you Second Corinthians chapter four, verse eighteen. Everybody says sense knowledge. sense knowledge. Worry is a sin. Act on the way. Hebrews chapter twelve. Hebrews chapter three, verse twelve, and chapter four, verse two. Give me Hebrews chapter three, and verse number twelve. I think there was something like that. Hebrews chapter number 3 and verse number 12. Jesus Christ. Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you 
there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. So when you have unbelief, God call your heart evil heart. Take in a deep breath. Let unbelief leave you. When you are unbelief, you are turning away from God. Unbelief is making you have that attitude. Refuse to walk by your sense. Walk by faith. Don't hear about their increased tariffs and then you are having feverish. Don't hear the radio about the predictions they are making. Whose report will you believe? They can increase one petrol to thousand gallons. You will survive. Because my God shall supply. Not the government, but your heart. I refuse to look at politicians. Ebinim to be TA news. No more popo. Hey, what's your care? Are they? I see two petrols. I can't hear them. I'm here. If it's a time when you want to see a tip petrol, soda. Think about it. Get used to it. Everybody can do campaign and come and come to politics. But it's one thing to do campaign, it's another thing to come to power. And your money account campaign has any to be from my power, also. Because it's not rare, it, it can't work. So all the children of God, they depend on God. Don't worry about petrol increase. Don't worry about doom so, doom so. May the Lord give you a plant. May the Lord give you a generator, a gen site. So it is, the problem is not a matter of the electricity. God has given you a generator. You do me a You to this a year, Juma. Lift your hands and praise your God. Period. People will come to power and go. But your relationship with God must stay forever. God forbid that I wake up and my confidence is in politicians. Do you know that from January to now, I have not listened to any radio station or any talk show because it doesn't increase my faith. What are they going to say in Kukuro Kuda will increase my faith? Or when some finishing advert, once we are heading, or two Yare Kogu Liberia, or two Kogu Salelion Guinea, not starting an advert. Look at the way they did it. Instead of calling the names of the country, they say West Africa. Because that is the next move of God. That's where it's coming from. The I mean, next move, you know, it appears from West Africa. Amen. And they started launching an attack on that country. How many countries are in West Africa? How many of them has this sickness in their place? But the media mentioned West Africa. What to not advert in our system, never we? And to what we need faith, you know, enter our hearts. Yes, we try to throw them on this call. We try. I'm here now for four two. And about we say. Oh, me that was your okay. I'm free hospital now, but you now me ask me already. Now me now running. So don't see me so sad. Now me a healing me bola. Kick, 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 kick. You see that body dry. Part of the fire. Me it part of the fire. I can't see sense. Can you now? Okay. Let's go. No, you become afraid. Obekaya or the some of the yarden or the bar before this one. That's the way he does it. Or two yarden the bar. You no, are advertising ah, and he uses the media. Say, say whether you like it or not. By the time you open your TV or your radio, you must have faith because Satan has taken over the media. What about to see an Omoka, BBC Nieka, Al Jazeera Nieka, Sky Nieka, CC Nieka, na na oh TV trends so far. Na GTV, I'm the only one free when you want to no more. No more, so much people are nominated. They go mama, no more Oh, you, you are not listening to what I'm talking about. TV3, now we are known. So, most of their news, they get it from here, then they say it. They just shall live by faith. That's right. So, when you hear it, say, hey, listen, if, if you see a Ebola uh, secret person, you greet him. 
Instead of sickness coming to you, your healing power in you must rather heal the person. Receive that grace. Walk in that confidence. If the devil, if God doesn't protect you, you don't need sickness to kill you. Dr. Mas Moron sat in a play. He was not sick. The thing the devil is using to threaten to kill you, he can't use it. You have given permission. He is naturally an agent of darkness. So when you see him coming physically and he's revealed, it means he has lost the battle. Listen to me. Satan can jump on a laboratory machine in a hospital and produce wrong results to torment you. Walk by faith. I say he can. When the Lord asked me a question, he said, if children can be injected here, near friend of measles, uh, vaccination, how can't you believe that the blood of Jesus is a vaccination? Think about it. The problem is not the blood. Your faith is not in it. Your faith is in chloroquine injection. Your faith is in your doctor. No, because you can see him. Because you can feel him. The natural people live as if the supernatural is not real. But the supernatural created the natural. So when God says you are healed, the same thing might be there, but he has healed you. You have to believe it. I see that you are tired. Let me end it. How many have I given to you now? Five. Lack of patience. Here we are. Everybody say lack of patience. Lack of patience. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Hmm. The devil intimidates and brings pressure. Don't give him place. What did I say? Satan does what? Int- now, T, anytime you are under pressure, it might not be from God. God is gentle. God doesn't force you. The guy that wants to marry you are all forced to wed him by force. You can call in the next two weeks. Check in here. Okay. Metrizam's Jew. And can my mean yen bomb pine ka cra cra yen num soon try up. Nanka December by dear. Nanka January, February, March, April, May. By me, ni may ye. Nanka June, July. There be there be I want us to marry. Check it. A day yan I want to mean try five months. Check it. A day. What is it that you cannot wait? It's a very logical ideology. I am writing an exam because preparation for wedding engagement here, it might distract me. Into my mean we may. Who do I mean we may 30th and I'm we may 15th or 16th and now 20th and you're wedding. Also, um, pray. And yeah, if you don't allow us to do it January, I'm not going to marry again. Call. My name call. See, speed in our do raw at the end of the speed in our BP. Can I call it? Why are you so desperate to say you threat you can crab you know? Who do I wear some satin chain? Look at what I feel. Oja wuna on mercy wapa. Na usua oba onata. Oh, empabon me bromo bono mo 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 sasono. Enyam pai bo. E complain. Ready? Especially mo mo ye se no dia shamo sa. Complain. It's not prayer. Ready? A dear John, I am ready. So okay, okay, ready. I had a very important call. So I have to talk to some people from outside, some, some, some men of God. I said, I don't know if I don't don't Radi Ome Kutu non Pami Chow. So would your goodness, Nami, so your beer goodness. Nothing has happened. Live your life. Most of your prayer you are praying, you know that God is not answering, but you are praying it. Nami, so your goodness in your day. Nami, so your goodness. You have done some things, I can't miss so your good for first anchor. You know, be sitting where you are sitting. So keep quiet. 
instead of saying, walk in love, this is the way you do. Lord, I thank you for what John has done in my life. I know you are teaching me something out of it. Bless him and give him a good wife. Once you made that statement, God orchestrated a good was done for you. Period. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. And do good to them that despitefully use you. Don't stay out of scripture. Stay within that scripture. You enjoy fetish priest Christianity. No? It is not in your sermon. I can stay in the pulpit and by prophetic conscience, God will declare, use me to declare something for him to fight your enemies. But don't let it be your prayer party. The every Babubia Bobia, who's your enemies also. No, I'm true, my dear Guo. Radimi Anti, new way. Radim Pentacle Sammy way. Sammy Mammy, new way. Radiso and so be for. When you wish, I say. Nasaka, you disappoint me, Radi. No, I sound by Radi. You have become a fetish priest. The fetish priestess. You are not in love. Boom, pipe, boom, na. In tune with your body, can say. And then we send the fire of God. Now you're ready. It's just a man in my dad. Who, 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 and God is not moved by your emotions. God is rather training you. If it's not because of the guy, your character will not be shaped up. The guy that disappointed you is making you learn sense. Because you said first, now you didn't have sense. He said, man, man, but we are careful. You are going slow. You are using wisdom. And you are, you are careful. First, man, I'm going to share everybody must have a pass you must go through a mess to have a message so in your mess you will learn a lot of message I thank God for what I've been through it taught you it will teach you how to live right God will use your mistakes to train you and make sure you don't repeat them some of you are here because on name you have learned sense now you are, can I have a witness here you are careful you are careful. You are careful. You are careful. Look at somebody and say, patience. patience. Did he give me the scripture in Hebrews? Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without what? Wavering. For he is faithful. For, for he who promises what? No, I didn't hear you. He who promises what? Who has promised you? And the Bible says he is what? Hebrews chapter 1 verse what? 20 what? Three. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12 Hebrews 6 12 finally are you blessed yes. everybody should buy this tape that you do not become sluggish but imitate give me the King James version if you don't mind that he be not slothful but followers of them who through what faith and patience inherit the promise so if you want to inherit promise you need to have faith and what patience Faith and what? Patience. Okay, watch me. Who do you know? Who faith in their own, but your patience is not correct. And yes, I'll betray. Your faith is intact. Because patience is the pillar that holds faith, I told you, to the manifestation camp. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Saying, surely, blessing, I'll bless you. And multiply, I'll multiply you. Who swear? Talk to me. I may swear, no? It'll be 30 years. Saying, surely, give me verse 15. Give me verse 15. And so, after he had patiently endured, hey, open term girl, querista. After he was what? Endured, he obtained what? You need 
patient. Tell somebody you need patient. To what say? Because who feel is here? On now for four warranty, you are in hurry to marry any chimpanzee. You are in hurry. You want to marry any lion? You just want to make sure you two, you are wearing ring. Oh, but so I shake awa. Koto koto go. Let Toby. A lot of people in the church are not patient. They cannot stay for long. They cannot endure. Especially up and coming preachers. The first 19 years of my ministry, I serve others. 19. Some people cannot serve for one year. I serve Reverend Piakofi for almost 13 years. Some of you don't have 2% of the grace I have. You are in hurry to start, I shall not want church. <laughs> oh, you don't know. Not everybody. Listen, all of you sitting here. Not everybody has a frontline ministry. Yes. No, it's a different book. We will struggle for life. You will struggle. This church is less than two years. If God said, why don't you prepare? Listen to me. Jesus prepared for Jesus prepared 18 years for three years ministry. The first time we heard Jesus was 12 years. We didn't hear again until he was 30 and 33 years finished his ministry. Why do you want to prepare three years for 18 years ministry? It doesn't even work with the natural. I am sure Ruth has some apprentice. They've been there for three years. It is only ministry that people want to be prepared for six years. How many years? Twelve. Twelve. He has worked with somebody for twelve years. One day, if he blesses that lady and he's going to open his saloon, how what kind of hairdresser will she be? She's working in the realm of his master. Yeah. You are not in front line. Some of you, I'm not training you. Matt, protocol, you are not being trained. Lillian, Ocean, you are not trained. You are not trained. Some of you are not in, you are not under training. Don't lift your shoulder. You are me training. I feel I will check your characters. Uba me tell me so be I say. No be so I say. Obi chao no I say. Obi chao no I say. You are learning patient. Training. Allow God to train you. After he has patiently endured, don't conclude that your husband is a bad man. You need 10 years to know him. You need 10 years to know your wife. 10 years. <laughs> this is your mother. I'm still learning. God told me, say, the things you preach, who can't come? Who can Preaching in a Nako Pacha, my devotion point on Savage in the Pasua, three children also. Does he must say, made the mamma one or three bamiso? And to the way you say a marriage is a school without graduation, who won't cast our wedding? You come. A man of Tian, every day you are syllabus is different. Obi syllabus and ne on Sre Obi syllabus and ne Nayasi and Yap. あやしねやねやのおびあほやねひおびしらぼせねおさのパジョークそんこはのおしれえんこフランキスコトアイスクリームえんこいせいえんこいせいムフィフランキスムコドダンコアしらぼしにてみせさあせさはもなふいのわだ
years. The Lord give us grace. Amen. This is the conclusion of the matter. What you cannot change, ask for grace. Mami, Shamani, we, the animal me and Timmy and we, and I will trust. Me, I bear what I know. Me catch and say, Mammy, a juma be brown with me and yet. Tama be far, men are be dimetino, when I will trust a juman. The next 50, 60 years, we are going to live with it. Don't let this generation think that they can go into marriage and run out quickly. Divorce is like amputation. You can have your body, but part of it is gone. And it can never come back. And listen, if people will be sincere, and that is one thing I love Americans about, all the people that are divorced, they are pretending they are happy, but they are not. Some of them are remarried. They are pretending they are okay, but they are not. Because the second one, the two, they wish they stay with the first one. It is God's plan and principle. So you may divorce so quickly. So ask for grace. And stay. And work it out. Two cannot work except they be in agreement. Work it out. With prayer. With fasting. With God's words. With commitments. And with dedication. And with determination. I am going to stay with you. No matter what comes. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me? Rise to your feet. God bless you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this message. For further inquiries, contact World Prayer Center, PO Box, GP21421, Accra, or telephone, plus 233-303-413-703, or plus 233-303-413-705. Email us on info at wpcministries.org, or visit our website at www.wpcministries.org.